I'd like to welcome everyone to Chris Fellowship. Glad you're here with us this morning. We have a few things to talk about before we enter into worship. First of all, Pastor, uh, Brother Damien's going to be sharing today. Pastor Richie is at Reedland Church of Christ, and he is preaching a uh, service. They're, they're putting in a new pastor, Brian Brophy, who's a friend of ours. And a pastor is preaching that message to insert him into the lead pastor there at Reading Church of Christ. So that's an exciting place for him to be today. Who would have thought, I, I wouldn't have thought 40 years ago, Brother, per, uh, Brother Wayne or Brother Parrish, if he was here, that we would be doing a service at a Church of Christ. But here we go. Uh, there you go. That's awesome. Brother, pray, so pray for Pastor Brian Brophy. He's a great guy. And uh, that's where he is today. So he's not on vacation anywhere. He is uh, sharing there. Um, we need volunteer in our audio and video uh, ministry. They need some people to help volunteer and help do some of that work. Uh, some, I'm, probably most of y'all during the pandemic, we were on uh, did video online, and we've continued to do that. And that's proved to be a very valuable thing. For folks that can't make it to church for one reason or another, they can still have church at home. And uh, so that ministry needs some help. And uh, if you would like to help, just contact Joy. I think her extension is 140. And uh, she will find something for you to do, a way to take part in the family. Amen? There's a, uh, there's a way for every one of us to take part in the family, in our church family. Uh, the ladies' Bible study on Tuesday, from here on out, Miss Shirley's going to be at Marcella's. So for the rest of this month, it will be at Marcella's Kitchen, and after that, we will let you know. There you go. All right. To, to leave your tithe and offering here today, uh, there's boxes in the vestibule on the wall. There's some up here on the stage. You can go to christianfellowship.org and give there, or you can text give to 270-906-9658. Is Damien back there, Brad? No? So, Brother Damien, share and pray for him as we worship a little bit, and uh, I'm excited. about Damien, I'm excited about what you, you have to say today, brother. Uh, give him a big hand. Yeah. Are you going to speak in Spanglish today? All right, very good. That'll work. I'm looking forward to it, buddy. All right, well, let's all stand up, and we're going to pray together. Lots of folks in our church family um, need a touch from God, and I just ask you to, to agree with me for them. Let's pray together. God, you're so good to us, and uh, Lord, we just thank you for your blessing in our lives. Thank you for revealing uh, the Lord Jesus to us. Father God, thank you for saving us through his sacrifice and obedience. And God, I just pray right now for our pastor, for Brother Damien, for our worship team, for the folks that are in kids' ministry today. God, anoint them and empower them to glorify the name of Jesus. God, that today you will be lifted up and we'll be drawn to you. Yes. And you will change our lives in Jesus' name. Yes. God, lift up some folks in our church family need a touch from you. God, just continue to touch Leroy Hergesheimer. God, give him strength in his body. And uh, just raise him up in Jesus' name for Jan Sapurchi. Continue to touch her and Linda Holman. Help them to recover quickly in Jesus' name for Bill Smith. Just be with him. God, I just pray that these brain tumors would not come back in Jesus' name. God, just be with him. Encourage him, Father. I thank you for that. God, for the, so many that are battling cancer, God, we lift up uh, Jim Clendenin and uh, Frida Rowley, Keena Van Pelt. Lord God, just heal their bodies. Do a miracle of healing in Jesus' name. We thank you for that. For Patty Parrish, God, continue to, tell, help, to uh, heal her, help her through these uh, treatment she's receiving in Jesus' name. For Mike Debo, Father God, I believe report that says he's healed. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for that, God. We just believe your report. God, we lift up Kathy Muller to you, Father. We just pray for a miracle of healing for her. Uh, just raise her up in Jesus' name for Sharina Hill. Uh, for Scarlet Faith, God, for Bill Jenkins, we speak healing over them, Lord God. Touch their bodies for your honor and your glory, Father God. Lift up uh, Emily Dolworth to you, Father God. We pray for a miracle. We pray uh, for continued good reports for her in Jesus' name, Father. Right now, Lord God, we just lift our hands. 
We just say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way in my life today. Do a work in me, Lord God. Make me more like Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's praise him. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm pressed and not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for the promise will endure. That the joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my Days of your servant David, building 
sing a tune full of praise. These are the days of great harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. We are the labor in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun at the trumpet. your salvation God we thank you for your grace and your mercy this morning God we just want to love on you today and bless you today Lord we call upon you Lord hallelujah Jesus Lord you roll I need Lord, you roll, I need. You satisfy my soul, and you make me so complete. Lord, you roll, I need. Hallelujah. When I am faithless, you remain faithful. When I am weak, Lord, you remain strong. When I'm afraid and in doubt, your thoughts are peace, not evil, to give me a future and a Lord, you roll, I need, come on, sing it to him. Lord, you roll, I need. You satisfy my soul, and you make me so complete. Lord, you roll, I need, when I am faithful. When I am faithless, you remain faithful. When I am weak, Lord, you remain strong. When I'm afraid and in doubt, your thoughts are peace, not evil, to give me a future and a hope. I need Lord you roll I need you satisfy my soul and you make me so complete Lord you 
hero I need hallelujah 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 Lord, you're all I need. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you're all I need. Come on, lift your hands to him and say, Lord, you're all. Lord, you're all I need. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We surrender to you, Jesus. We take a moment and breathe in you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy that surpasses all understanding. Oh, we worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We are nothing without you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves before you. Hallelujah, Jesus. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that Become shadows in the light of you. Yes, Lord. When I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthralled in your love. When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, in the light of you.
hallelujah When I look into your holiness When I gaze into your loveliness When all things that surround become shadows in light your heart when my will becomes enthralled in your love when all things that surround become shadows in the light of in the light of you The reason I live is to worship you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, I ourselves before you Lord we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy just worshiping church for a moment lift his name on high He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. There is no other. There is no other who can say it's you, Jesus. It's you, Jesus. 
rescue us from ourselves. Hallelujah. I worship you. And I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. Come on and say one more time. And I worship you. Holy God, and I worship you, Jesus. The reason I live is to worship you. And I live is to worship with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. ¿Cómo están hoy? ¿Se encuentran todo muy bien? Oh, sorry, I forgot that I need to speak English today. I was just checking if you have learned the language of heaven yet. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're still here on earth, so we, you can still learn it, okay? And we have a school and a Spanish teacher and a German teacher. They are the two languages that speak in heaven, English and German. All right. Um, I, where's Aaron? Come on, Aaron. Aaron, have a, a, a quick update to share with us. So I know that some of the students, missionaries have left, and Aaron um, was going to share what's going on in his life. Is this on? We good, or I just muted? it? Okay, good. I think I muted. Just touch one, then. There you go. Now you're good. Hello. All right. Hey, everyone. How y'all been? It's good to see everyone. Yeah. So um, some of y'all might not know me. Um, I think most of y'all do. Um, I'm one of our worship leaders and missionaries. Um, one, of the, one of the few that have been sent out to, well, actually now the number's stacking up, um, sent out to YWAM. Um, and I work with uh, YWAM. It's an organization, uh, Youth with a Mission. Um, and I work with our base over in Kona, Hawaii. Um, and what we kind of do as an organization, we, we raise up missionaries, um, most young people like myself, and um, we train and we send those young people out into the nations. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to sh briefly share um, real quick uh, just uh, this past quarter, uh, a couple testimonies, and just like what the Lord has been doing in my life. Um, and then about how um, uh, I'll probably be here for a little bit. I'm probably going to miss a, a whole quarter, um, but I'll go ahead and get into it real quick. Um, yeah, so last quarter, um, we had Bible quarter, and it was three months of just intensive, like, studying the Word, and it was amazing. Um, like, we, in the first 10 days of our school, um, we read through the whole Bible cover to cover. Um, I mean, we were waking up early in the morning, and going to bed late at night, and we would read out loud as a group. We split up into small groups um, in our school. There's about 55 students in my school. Um, it was a fairly small school, um, but we split up into about, yeah, four or five different groups, and we read through the whole Bible cover to cover. Um, and uh, David Parrish, he has uh, he has this thing called the, the is it Power Wash? or well, I don't know what it's called. Joy, do you know? Power Wash? Yeah, he's like, where you just, for three days, you just read the word, and you don't let any other voices in your head, and it kind of cleanses out your brain. 
Well, I think that's, I think that's what it did for us, like to start out the quarter, you know, spending 10 days submerged in the living word of God. 10 days just submerged from when you wake up to when you go to bed, submerged in the living, active word of God, which is able to discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Like, like that was amazing. And although we couldn't take in all that information, you know what I'm saying, in the flesh, I believe our spirit was picking up a lot more than what we realized. Um, and so after that, that kind of started off the quarter pretty good. Um, and then um, we kind of got into in-depth study. So we went through the whole Bible again, um, but in depth, um, from book to book, um, studying genres, um, and so like like apocalyptic, like Revelations, Daniel, um, uh, like uh, the wisdom literature, like your your Psalms, your Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and so we studied all these things. We studied historical uh, context. Um, so now, for the first time in my life, I actually feel like I have some some kind of like. Um, information to go off of as far as the historical aspect of the of the old testament and things and how everything kind of clicks in together um and so i kind of feel like i know how the bible works now (laughs) um for the first time in in years and years of being a christian that's sad to say um but it's true and uh it was also my first time reading through the whole bible um but it was it was an amazing experience this past quarter i learned a lot had some amazing teachers come in um and i want to share a brief testimony real quick. Maybe, maybe I'll share first that um, I, I'm actually going to be here for a little bit. Uh, so my, I have a surgery coming up. Some of y'all know I've, I've had some health issues throughout um, the years. Um, and right before I left for Kona this time, they actually found a hiatal hernia. So but I was like, I heard a, out of the word of the Lord, I'm going despite this. So I went, and um, it was rough. I dealt with a lot of pain. Um, but when I got back, my surgeon finally scheduled my surgery. Um, he scheduled it for the 18th of this month. Um, so if y'all could um, be in prayer for that. So the 18th of this month, I'll have a hiatal hernia repair and then a TIF surgery to kind of help. It's like to help stop acid reflex. Um, and so I'll be hanging around here about five to six weeks after that um, because it's a five to six week recovery. So that puts me like missing almost a whole quarter of school. So I'm super bummed about that, but I'm super excited. I get to, to hang out with y'all, um, catch up with Otis, and uh, just, uh, yeah, just love on y'all and let y'all love on me and, um, and just uh, spend some time with you guys. Um, but I'm going to share a quick testimony, if that's cool, and, yeah. I'll, and then I'll just hand the mic over testimony. to you. I love testimonies. Don't we love testimony? Yes. Yeah. So this is so beautiful. All right. So we, as a school, we try to do, we try not to just soak in all this knowledge from the Word, right? We want to go out and actually apply it. We want to become the Word of God. Um, and so um, our, our school leaders intentionally create these outreach times on the weekend. Even though we're swamped with homework, um, they create these outreach times on the weekend to where we go out on maybe like a whole Saturday and we'll go evangelize on the island. Um, and so I'm so thankful for that because we get to actually apply what we're learning. But anyways, we went out one Saturday and uh, I've got many testimonies, so I would, after, um, after church service today or whenever, I, want, I, I would love to share these testimonies. I mean, they're beautiful stories of God, of God moving, and so if any of y'all want to come up to me and ask, that's awesome. But uh, so on this story, we went out, and we went to this village called Waimea, and it's super uh, new age. I don't know if y'all know that term. They're kind of like, uh, like the really, really spiritual people, um, kind of, I don't know how to describe it. They... Um, they kind of believe that, some of them believe that, like, the whole universe is God, like that chair, all, all of our minds together are God, just a whole bunch of different things. Um, and so they're super open-minded um, people. Um, but a, a lot of times, unfortunately, uh, the New Age community is involved with uh, lots of uh, demonic things. Um, and so we went out there expecting that, right? So we get out there to this village, Waimea, and we're evangelizing. We split up into groups of two, um, and I'm out, I'm going out with my, my buddy from Switzerland. He's about 40-something. He's amazing, just full of wisdom. So we're going out and we're evangelizing. And uh, we walk into this art show, super new age art show, like really demonic stuff, crystals, like all these different things. Um, and uh, so we're just praying with people and talking to them and hanging out with them, loving on them, praying for healings, 
um, and just doing those types of things. And we come across this one guy at the end. Um, he's with his partner. He's about 29. She's about 59, I think. And uh, he, uh, his name was a Ruby. And so a Ruby, um, I had been praying and asking God. I said, God, I, I want to know. Uh, there's a few giftings I operate pretty strongly in, and I, I feel like I don't operate in the gift of like interpreting dreams and visions that well. And I'm, I'm going after them all. I, I'm someone who believes that we can go after all the giftings, okay? I don't know, I don't know what, what everyone believes of, with that in here, but I believe we can go after all the giftings. And Paul says to earnestly desire the giftings, right? So um, it's for the glory of God. Um, and so I'm asking God for interpretation of dreams and visions. And this guy actually begins to tell us a dream and a vision he had. And one was of Satan, one was of Jesus. And I gave him the interpretation of that dream, that vision. And I'm telling you, like, what came out of my mouth? I was so surprised. I was like, wow, this actually makes sense. <laughs> it was like, I just, I stepped out in faith. I knew I heard the Lord. And when I was, uh, and I'll tell you all the full story later if you want to you wanna hear it. Um, but when I stepped out in faith and, um, and just told him the, the interpretation to the dreams and visions. And he was like, whoa, that makes sense, man. I'm like, yeah, it does. Um, but, uh, and so, uh, so anyway, the Lord's just kind of moving and working on him and showing him that, hey, I'm here right now, um, and I want you. And he knows that. And so we kind of call that out and bring that forth. I mean, he's trying to sell their, their art that they've been making. Um, but he, he can see that this, this moment is way more important than any other moment. So he leaves his, his girlfriend or whatever she is to, to doing that. And I'm like, hey, man, let's, let's do this. I really feel like we're supposed to take you outside away from all this, and we're supposed to pray over you. And he said, Okay. And so we, we bring him outside, and we begin to pray over him. Um, and uh, the Lord told me he had a demon. And so we begin to, we begin to pray over him, and um, I asked him if he wanted it out. And he said he actually told me how long it had been there and when it had came into him. Um, and that's a little bit more personal. But, um, and so anyway, uh, we, uh, we begin to pray over him because he wanted it out, and he wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so we prayed over him, and he kind of just manifests and falls and, and coughs this spirit out. Um, uh, and uh, in the name of Jesus, as we were praying over him, yeah, this spirit just came out of him and, and left. And as it's happening, another Christian walks by and literally hugs him. Um, he wasn't even a part of it. He just hugs him, and he's like, he's like you're going to be all right. God's with you. Um, and it was just such a beautiful moment. Um, I'll tell you, but this was, I think this was... What, what happens next is actually way more beautiful. Although he had a demon cast out of him, he was set free, and then he invited Holy Spirit you, into Lord. him. He invited Holy Spirit into him. There was something that happened that was so beautiful after this. We left. We came back about an hour later after we had some lunch, and we tried to plug him in with a, a, a believer in that area. And then um, uh, the Lord said, Aaron, when you started this conversation, I gave you a word of knowledge that the name that he gave you was not his real name. And I was like, I know, God, but, like, I, I, don't know, I don't know if that's your voice. So, like, and he's like, he keeps telling me, God's like, Aaron, I gave you a word of knowledge that the name that, I, that, the name that he gave you is not his name. Ask for his real name because um, he's still so lost. Um, he's still believing so many lies of his past. So I looked at him, and I was just about to say, hey, man, what's your real name? And, and the Lord actually told me his, his girl as well, that was not her real name. And I was like, man, if I'm wrong on this, like, <laughs> I'm going to look crazy. Um, but I think I'm hearing the Lord. And I, just, I was just about to go for it. As it was about to come out of my mouth, he looks at me. And he says, he says by the way, um, Ruby is not my real name. He said, Jeff is my real name. And he said, but I don't know, like, what to go by. And I said, go by Jeff. I said, that's what your parents named you. I said, that's what God had planned for you to be named through your parents. And that's and, and he started, in that moment, he started to restore his, get his, his original identity restored. I mean, Satan had stolen so much of his identity that it was all the way back to the, his name. He took his name away. He left his, his home state, flew to Hawaii. He had no family. He didn't even know his name. I mean, this, this dude was lost. Thank you, Lord. And so I'll finish up real quick. But basically what happens is I just look at him, and I'm like, hey, man, um, Say it right now, like out loud. My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. And he just kept saying it. And he began to weep. My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. 
and he would begin to weep, just weep and weep. And he, as he got his identity restored from God. And so that's just one testimony from this past quarter. Um, awesome. But that's, that's it, man. Awesome. And, and sorry for and No, and time. that's good. And actually, that lead me to thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. We're glad we're going to have you here. That lead me to, to tell you that Rebecca and Trevor just have almost the same experiences with a, a lot of students they took to the ramp. So the same way that kids are being sent into YWAM, I want to encourage you, parents, that you are part of this church, send your kids with Rebecca and Trevor, because it, I had the opportunity to go with them to the ramp, and it was amazing. It was amazing to see those kind of testimony and your own kids, they went to the ramp with them. So it's, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's happening not only in the mission fields, it's happening right here where you are. And I'm telling you this because another thing, like Aaron is one of the wine warmers. Well, I'm about to go to soon to Argentina, and I'm receiving one hand, more than 120 wine warmers in our facility in Argentina. Kids like Aaron are going to come to Argentina, and I'm telling you, from England, from Switzerland, they were telling me that um, they were coming kids from different kind of nation. And, uh, and they're coming now to the a school that we have in Argentina to evangelize a whole city, uh, a music festival that, that goes big. And, so, and I want to stand up here and say thank you, you know. Thank you for what you're doing. You know, I know the last Sunday you have an amazing a special send-off. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for supporting, like, Aaron. Thank you for supporting the, the, the youth with uh, Rebecca and Trevor, the one that you help and send, my, you know, because I was there, and what God is doing to this generation is amazing. It led me to what I'm going to speak today, but I want to put a couple pictures. This is the picture of the graduation when we are sending in Argentina. So it's, um, we started in 2021 during COVID. We graduated 20 students. This is, this is this year, 2022. We graduate uh, and then send them. And this is what, next picture is what happened with the 2021 students. Now they become missionaries, you know. So these missionaries, they, they already served through the whole year of 2021 in two unengaged people group areas, which that means there's no church, there's nobody preaching the gospel one of these missionaries is 19. They're missionary. There's not a student no more. They're there for a whole year living like they live in the middle of nowhere. We teach a tribe, we teach tribe, which hundreds of people getting saved in a year. You're talking about revival. You're talking about, even that's what I'm speaking today. I'm speaking about revival. And not only revival, how to be a revival. Like, you know, if you live in revival, you become that revival. And the people around you are revived too, like these kids. The next picture is the, the students. And then the next picture, more of the students in different locations, is a translation that we did in 2021 to a new language that we find out that they don't have a Bible, they don't have nothing. And these students are going to take that Bible in those places. So I'm standing over here saying thank you, not only for Argentina, which, yes, we start in 2023, we're about to receive more students, and finances play a big key. So if you want to be helpful in any way you want to help through the year, go ahead and do it. You can do it financially, you can do it in prayer. You all know that in order to help Argentina, all you have to put is Argentina in your envelope. If, and, but, and even through that, you know, you can go to dpmargentina.org and find out more about it. I love it because we started this dpmargentina.org before Argentina won the World Cup. Yeah, I know. So now it's really popular, DPM Argentina. Yeah, so there you go. What happened? Oh, you, you're signing over me for what? Okay, good. Oh, the kids need to go. See, I'm glad that you have. <laughs> See, there you go, there you go. I get right on, it's like start the... the you know, a Pastor, uh, Pastor Richie have Jenny. I have my wife over there. It's like, the kids. <laughs> so I want to thank you. I, that's what I want to do. I want to thank you because 2022, we finish it in a, an amazing way. We send more kids to YWAM. You know, we, and I'm saying we, it's you. You know, it's you. 
And, and, and even what we do in Argentina is, is because of Christian fellowship, is because of war mission and evangelism, and then and DPM Argentina, which is a way, a, a channel. So I, we want to thank you. I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, and, you know, for grace and for everybody that is in the mission field, because this church is doing it. And the truth is, is, is God doing it. You know, like when people ask me, Damien, how much do you need? Hey, we need a lot to manage a school in Argentina. But you know what? We made it through 2022 thank, because of you, because of you giving. And I want to say thank you. So now I'm going to ask all the kids to come to the front, and we're going to dismiss them. The kids are, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Listen, there's another way that you can do to Argentina, too, is someday send these kids, Okay. I'm working with uh, Youth with a Mission, too, and we're receiving 120. I'm, I'm leaving soon to do that. So the whole plan is that one day, instead of just sending them to Kona, send them to Argentina. I'll leave them there, believe me. I put them in the middle of nowhere, too. So if you think a white woman is too fancy, send them to Argentina. I'll send them to the desert. Don't worry about it. All right. So, no, guys, you, you're all good. Okay. I, I keep you. They have a good cows in Argentina. All right. Unless you're vegetarian, you're in trouble. All right. So, Lord, I thank you for this generation that they are being used today, Lord. Not tomorrow. It's today when you are using them. And we pray for the teachers that they will keep imparting to their life more of you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. You're dismissed. Babe, is anything else I'm forgetting? Okay, good. Today I want to talk about revival. I want to talk about what revival do around us. What is revival? And I'm going to start with this story that is amazing. And it's in 1 Samuel 22, 1 to 2. And I'm going to show you what happened when somebody is full of the presence of God. What happened when somebody is... You know, we hear testimonies. You know, like, for example, one of the testimonies in Argentina, one of these kids learned what is to live under the present and surrounded by the present and filled by the present. So he goes to one of these villages, knock at the door, and this woman is, 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 have epilepsy, and he starts praying for her, you know, and she got healed. And then she brought the testimony saying, you know, God healed me, and then because of God healed me, God touched my mom. And because God touched my mom, then touched my daughter. And it's like, and then that's, that's, that's the example of revival. Revival doesn't just stay in a movement. It, it, it's more than that. Even Jesus said it, the spirit of the Lord is upon me right now to what? To heal, to restore, to set the captive free. Listen, I come from a nation of revival. Google it. The revival in Argentina. And it's, it's, it started with an American visiting and visiting Peron. I don't know if you heard about, not, maybe not Peron, but you have uh, heard about Evita. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Mi alma está sediendo. Mi vida entera. No? Okay, you probably watch a movie. But this American missionary show up and say, I need to pray you feel like he needs to pray for the president. And it's like, that was, who in the world is going to let him come in and pray for the president? So he goes ahead and say, I'm here to pray for the president. He was really, really, really sick. It's, it's in the history of Argentina. They kind of hide it, but it's there. It's an American missionary. In that time, churches, Christian churches like this one, were not allowed to gather in an outside of their small spa because it was handled it by this Catholicism, but it was more than Catholicism. It was like communist mentality slash with a lot of other things. It wasn't the Catholics that you know in the United States. It was a manipulated, controlled thing. So it was against of any evangelical church. So this missionary goes over there and says, I need to pray for the president. Nobody's pressing any attention, but he's inside of that pink house that they call it. And he's sitting, the president is sick. And all of a sudden, he sees us men that keep walking and come in and come out. And he called the man and said, hey, can I pray for you? And he prayed for there, for that right there. And the man 
start walking normal. So he goes inside and let the people know what happened. So they let him come in and pray for the president. He was having a tumor, a cancer tumor. He was not making it through. And he goes inside in this secret place of the president and his wife and pray. And God healed him. Now the president, Peron, at that moment, went against the whole nation and said, From now on, evangelical Christians have, can have open stadiums. And he was, honestly, it brought him in, in, in the history of Argentina, it brought him against everything because now he's telling everybody, you know, they can. So they start doing this big stadium and they start filling it. And that was the beginning of an amazing awakening and movement of revival in Argentina. Why did I share this? Because it comes through men. The same way that God want to use you and want to use me. That's why he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then later on, when he's about to be crucified, he said, listen, it's necessary for me to live so that the same spirit that is in me come upon on you. Did, I, did he make it clear? He said, the spirit of the Lord is for me, upon me to heal, to restore, to set free. So now I need to go so that the same spirit is on you. So this man knows it, knows it, and he did it in Argentina, and that was when I was studying, and then through him there was another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Well, it's just like the same day of the Pentecostal. It went from Jesus to 120. And then from 120 to everybody else, they is saying, I want that for my life. So today I want to point it, what happened with David? When he fled to the cave, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brother and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And listen to this. And everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was in discontented gathering to him. So he became captain of over them, and they were about 400 men with him. This is the first thing that happened in revival. Who comes to David? Now, let's go back a little bit. What is going on? Why is David in a cave? Because Saul messed it up. And God decided to anoint David. So once again, the spirit of the Lord now is on David. And because the spirit of the Lord is on David, Saul didn't like it. So want to kill him all the time. So he fled into this cave. And look what happened where there is a revival in somebody. Where there is a move of God in somebody. Everybody that came to hear. How, how those people were when they came to David? They were Distress, they were in debt, everyone was discontented, everybody was afflicted, everybody was, all the people that sometimes we say, get out of my life, they came to David's life. <laughs> but what happened? Did David change because of it? No, and I'm going to show you that. The mighty man's. You're going to find this in 2 Samuel 23, 9 to 20. I sh- I'm, and I want to show you what happened when one person said, you know what? I'm going to live under this presence of God, and I'm going to set my eyes only in God. Because, and, and I'm going to get to the point, what is revival? But, I, but I, why did I'm wor- using the word revival? Because I don't I guess it's because it's popular to you and me. But, but it's like, and I'm going to explain what, it, what is that. It's what it is to go to a youth camp and be filled and, with the presence of God. What it is to go to YWAM and be filled with the presence of God. What it is the, to come to Christian fellowship and be filled with the presence of God. It's a person that if you are filled by the presence of God, it's going to change your life. To the point that if you were in debt, 
you're not in debt no more. If you're stressed, distressed, you're not anymore. If you're a gossiper, you're not anymore. If you are a negative person, you're not anymore. If you are a person that lives in your flesh and bring issues and problems, you're not anymore. And because you become that person, you become that person, anybody that came close to you, they will become like you or even better than you. See, every move of God that it was really a move of God brings something. If he doesn't bring something, if he only brings his people failing in the altar, that's not a move of God. A move of God transforms. That's why you see healing. That's why you see people being set free. That's why you see restoration. See, when we bring kids to our school in Argentina, we bring them from the middle of nowhere. They're majority native. The people, they have no opportunity, no study, no nothing. But when they leave out of that place, they leave to be a disciple, they make disciples, they make disciples, they make disciples. And that's how we need to continue our life because that's what happened with David. And I'm about to show you these amazing people. I love this story. I want to be like one of these men. Do you have the Bible yet? Okay, so you're a Christian. Good. 2 Samuel 23, 9 to 20. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dobo, and Ahohite, uh, one of the three mighty with David, when they defeated the Philistines who were gathered there for a battle and the men of Israel had retreat, he arose and attacked the Philistines until his hands was weary and his hands stuck to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to plant her. And after him was Sashama, the son of Ahi Herati. The Philistine had gathered together in the troop where there was a piece of ground lentil. Uh, so the people flee from the Philistines, but he stationed himself in the middle of the field and defeated. Okay, this is so amazing. This is what happened when the person is in revival. I don't have a play, but let's, this one look like a play. The dude is like, everybody left. And you know, all he have is a, a plate of lentil. Okay, so the dude got a plate of lentil, and everybody leaves, and he's like, oh, man, I'm going to stay here with my plate of lentil. Do you like lentil? I like a little bit of lentil, but it's a supplement for protein, but that's what I prefer steak. All right, so they give you the lentil, and everybody left. Now, I want for you to picture this. And then all of a sudden, he looked around, surrounded by all the Felicians, and defeated it all. Okay, but this is the most amazing thing. The story just started. There was one that defeated 800. We're about to see when David was thirsty, three men went and get the cup and bring it back to him. We're about to see another one. They went and get a lions. Read it. Read all that in your house because all these people were the one that came to David in the cave. Were they afflicted? Were they neglected? They were the one they feel like they're nobody. So if you feel coming to Christian fellowship at some point, that you were nothing, that you, you, know, you were less, that you were, I don't know, like a, you were her, this is what I'm going to tell you. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. We can't continue living with excuses. Well, I am that way. Well, they were that way. And now these two, the one of the one, they went to the cave, they feel nobody and nothing, become the person that in order to def de defend a plate of lentil, kill who knows how many. David was, uh, so the people fled, from, but he stained his, okay, so then, so the people fled and Philistine, but they stained himself in the middle of the field defending it and killed the Philistine. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Then three of the, the 30 chief men went down a harvest time and come to David at the cave of Adulan. And the troop of the Philistine escaped in the valley of the 
refined. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of Philistine was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, the Samuel will give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And listen to this. So the three mighty men broke through the camp <laughs> of the Philistine, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gay, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he will not drink it, but pour it out to the Lord, and he said, Forbid it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the man who went and your party of their lips. Therefore, he will not drink it. And then there's another one after this one. They even got and killed a lion in the midst of the pit of the snow day. And then you keep reading and keep reading. And it's like, Damien, why are we reading this amazing story? Because this amazing story can be you. This amazing story can be me. Now, Satan doesn't want for you to be this. Satan wants for you to stay in unforgiveness. Satan wants for you to stay in gossiping. Satan wants for you to stay in pride. Satan wants for you to stay in all these things that this stupid flesh brings to us. But what happened with one man when it's anointed by God? What happened with one woman when it says, listen, I am the revival because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So I want to show you all this because now David is thirsty. Three men go and break through the whole camp to bring water to David. And then they get water and bring it and David realized, I'm not even worthy of this. So once again, that show you the heart of David. And now I want to show you why or what happened when we go to the same caves. But we don't let the Spirit of God change us. Obviously, we see a lot of things and we see why did the God now choose David. Well, we see the soul. And David, we always talk about the flesh and the spirit. The flesh and the spirit. Well, we know the soul did this. He disobeyed. Look in Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 10 and 11. Now the Lord, the word of the Lord come to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as a king, for he had turned back from following me and has not performed my com commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried out to the Lord all night. Well, for those that don't know this story, let me refresh you a little. This is the saddest stories in the Bible. The people ask God for a king. And why is it saddest? Because God himself said, I am their king. Why are they asking for a king? It's the saddest story when we start looking Amends as they are our king when God is the only king. Nothing should be your king more than just God. But then he said, because they ask, give it to them. So they choose a king according to what they want. Handsome, beautiful, big. And then what? Because of that, when God asks things to do by Saul, St. Samuel say, do this. He disobey. Hey, do this. He disobey again. Hey, do this. He disobey again. And then God say, I have had enough. And what did he say? I have found one after my heart. What is revival? A person after God's heart. That's it. You want explanation of revival? A person after God's heart. That is willing to obey. It's not even just an obedient person. Because you can be obedient, but not after his heart. So what is revival? A person after God's heart. That's why he said, I will turn 
the heart of the people back to me. God is looking for true worshipers. What is worship? A person after God's heart. What is revival? A person after God's heart. And when your heart is after God, then you change. And if you change, the people around you are going to see that your heart is after God, and then their heart become after God, and their heart become after God. That's why if you are a discipler, you will make disciples, and make disciples, and make disciples. Because it's not about you, and it's not about me. Actually, that is the problem. The problem is when it becomes about us. Saul's second sin was he preferred to please the people more than God. And he, even after he was addressed, because David wasn't all perfect, but that's what I love. Look at the Bible and the history of David. Every single time that he sinned and he was approached and he got, the, he got conviction and said, Oh, I have... I have what? Sin against my father, against my God. So you see a heart after God. A person that sinned, but in the moment that he was exposed, he didn't want to feel God. So in the moment that he was exposed, the first thing he does is what? Oh, can you, can you do one more thing before you leave? Can you honor me in front of the people one more time? That's what he did. So what happened if we are like souls? Well, look at Absalom. You know that the same story was repeated. Absalom was kicked out. David wasn't really kicked out, but he was wanting, Saul was wanting to kill him. So he went to the cave. And now Absalom goes to like a cave, an area. And look what that jerk did. 2 Samuel 15, 1 to 6. Because this is what happens when you and I choose to live in the flesh. When we choose to live in the flesh, sooner or later you're going to disobey God. And not only you're going to disobey God, you're going to become an influence to other people to be disobedient too. That's what happened with gossipers. Gossipers don't have nothing good in them. All they want to do is talk bad about other people. So those people that are hearing those gossip, they become gossiper too. Now, if you are anointed like David, what are you going to do? You're going to listen to that crap one more time. Second time, you're going to kick them out of them. Uh, well, cast them out. Okay, however you want to say it. But, yeah, because all the afflicted, all the neglected, all the sad people, they came to David. But they did not live the same way they came. Look at Absalom. They not only came, he recluted them. Look, I'm going to go to the last verse 6 so we don't have to read the whole thing. But look what it says around here. It says, and so it was whenever anyone come near to bow down to the king that he would put on his hand and take him a kiss him. And this manner Absalom act toward all Israel who come to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the heart of the men of Israel. If you start reading earlier, what Absalom started doing is start gossiping against his father and say, hey, have the king done something good to you? It's kind of like today as an associate pastor, let's say I start talking about, about Pastor Richie. And I start, hey, he's not doing things right. Oh, he's not doing this. Oh, he's not doing that. And I started gaining it to myself. That's what Absalom did. Absalom started gaining all the people that were either a little bit anxious because they were coming for judgment. So they were already a little anxious about something. So they would start recluding them, kind of like a splitting a church. Which, obviously, people, they do that. They do it in a, such a flesh way because things shouldn't be split Things should be multiplied. There's a big difference of splitting or multiplying. Multiplying is something that reproduce. Splitting, it comes out of issues. Sounds like denominations. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I belong to the denomination too and I report to it. 
So I'm not here to talk about that. But a lot of the issues that we have today in so many different denominations or so many is just different interpretation. And we are all under the same Jesus and the same God. So Absalom started using this for his favorite. And everybody that was coming to the king, the same way that everybody that came to David, they were against Saul. That's why they came to David. But look at the difference. When they came, they didn't even come to Absalom. Absalom went and waited for them at the door. And as they were coming to the king, he gossiped against the king and recluded for himself to come against the king. And let me tell you what will happen if you do that. You will fail and you will die sooner or later. David never raised his hand against Saul. And never even raised his hands against Absalom. And in both sides, God defend him. Against Saul, God took control. And against Absalom, God took control. Everybody now that came to Absalom and he recluded, rise up against David. And you know this, this story? He ended up killing his own self with a tree. But look at how amazing David was. Look at his heart. He didn't allow one of his men ever raise his hands against Saul, even though the soul was wrong. You don't hear out of those 400 men. You don't hear about those men, those warriors going against Saul. And that's what Satan wants. Satan wants for you to get so distracted and angry against a person. They may be deserved for what they have done to you. But you know what? Let me tell you something. If we don't become like David, which it is what? Forgiveness. Let go. If we don't become like him, we could end up like Saul or Absalom. David, what David did, instead of focusing on Saul, he focused on God. And that's the key. That's why a revival is being after God heart. So that's something between you and God. So the question is, what is in your life that is not allowing you to get after her? Is debts, financial issues, is stress, is unforgiveness? Well, but I have the right. Well, David have the right to, but never raise his hand. And Saul tried to kill him plenty of times. Well, listen, you got one to be in control. You want God to be in control? Then stop being in control. Forgive, let go. Don't stay in that spot because you're going to be in that cave where Satan wants you. And it's not wondering where all this come from. Let me tell you, let me show you with the Bible where all this come from. Book of Ezekiel 28, 17. God is speaking about Satan. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I'll lay you before kings that they might gaze at you. Your heart was lifted up. Your heart become prideful. Your heart make it all about you. Your heart, heart, heart. What happened with Saul? What happened with Absalom? They make it about their self. Where did that come from? From the father of lies. That happened with Satan. Satan, when you read, read the book of Ezekiel before, he was the splendor. He was the music. It's awesome, you know, and, and, and when you take a class of worship, you know, it, uh, uh, it, it, it shows you, it said he had tambourines. It's almost like he was built with tambourines and flute. He, it was said that he was the music and musical, he was the musical worship instrument for God. But then his heart was lifted. His heart was prideful. His heart made it all about him. You know the root of every issue? 
when we make it about ourselves. The root of an issue in a marriage, when one of you make it all about yourself. Oh, she didn't treat me right. Oh, she needs to be different. Oh, but she's the one that needs to change. Oh, no, he is the problem. Oh, he, he, he. You know, today, David Perry just posted something that I 100% agree on Facebook. He posted and said, you know, somebody give him an Alexa during Christmas. And he said, Alexa, play worship music. He said, hey, he's saying he posted, it didn't take a few moments when I was like, Alexa, please stop. Because a lot of the worship music was me, 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 me. And I'm like, you're exactly right. Go back now and listen to a lot of the worship music that we had today. It's like, change me, transform me. Listen, when you go in front of a king, you don't go to the king to ask for no more. You go to the king and realize, man, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for me. Well, I'm against for me. You're going to find me in everything. <laughs> Listen, I'm not against that. There's a moment for it. And I get it. We teach. Listen, I teach about worship. And that's one of the classes. They even invite me to uh, why when Hukum, they said in Spanish, youth with a mission, to teach about it. And, and, and we teach about the patio, the holy, and the holy of holy, and how to get there. But today, we're using music, which nothing bad. You guys have a radio station. But a lot of the songs is evangelistic songs. I record my own album in 2004 in Spanish, and it was an evangelistic project. But worship is about who? Him. Now, you can have evangelistic song. You can have songs to come to the altar. You know, come to the altar. My heart is, you know. And there's songs, you know, to minister who? You. What we need to learn more is to stop making it about ourselves. You're going to make, you're going to have a better life when it's not about you no more. When it's more about God. Because when it's about God, then you don't get hurt. You don't get offended because it's not about you anyway. It's about God. You want to have a better wedding, a, 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 a better marriage? Make it about Him. You want to have a better servanthood, if that's even a word? Make it more about Him and less about you. All of our issues is because we have made it about ourselves. Well, I got her. Well, why you got her? Because you make it about you. So go back to just make it all about him. Why did the David didn't, and even if he did get her, he handled it well. Because his heart was after the Father. Now, Satan, Satan is looking for Saul's and Absalom. Satan is like a roaring lion. It's not even a lion, but he's looking for people to make it all about you and you. You want everything that you have to be like used and blessed by God? Make it all about God. You might have to make major changes. Why? Because maybe you can make your business, your job, all about you and something that you want to leave to your kids. Awesome. But the best thing that you can leave to your kids is an example that your life is after God and your heart is after God. Satan began after his own heart. His heart was lifted to think about, oh, I can be like God. And then he said, he threw him down. Even Jesus said, I saw Satan coming like a, like a flash, coming down because of what? For the stupidity to make it about himself. And then I just show you the examples through the Bible. That when one person is full with the presence of God, 
400 people afflicted, neglected, stressed, and, and, and disappointed come. And they become the warriors, the, 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 the people that came and, and did amazing things. So today I'm speaking to you because I believe that you can become that person. They can be the, the, the one that say, Pastor Richie, do you need a, a cup of water from, from Argentina? There you go. I'll go get it for you. I, I, I can see why they threw it away. It was full of bacteria. I'm just kidding. Sorry, Argentinian. I have to say it about my country. If I said it about any other country, you guys would be offended. But we did win the World Cup, so we're all good. All right, so. Let's go back to this. There's only one thing that we need to live in revival. Just one. I'm not going to come up with 20 points today. And it's just a heart after God. That's it. You're going to be the best pastor. You're going to be the best youth pastor. You're going to be the best children pastor. You're going to be the best worship leader. You're going to be the best uh, uh, school teacher. You're going to be the best a heart after God. And that requires obedience because we see why Satan fell when he started thinking about good of himself. And he what? That led him to disobedience. What happened with Saul? Same thing. After himself. Let him to what? Disobedient. A heart after God leads you to what? Obedience. So why are we in school? Why are we in church? Because I want to know more so that I can obey. That's it. It's simple. And this leads me to Acts 13, 22 and says this. They repeat something that it says in Samuel. And when he had removed him, it's talking about Saul, he raised up for them David as king. To whom also he gave testimony and say, God himself say this, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Who will do all my will. See, I don't have to tell you to put 24-7 Worship music and what's the name of the radio station? Crossover Radio, Radio 2.0. I don't have to tell you that you need it. You will know that you need it if your heart is after God. You know, one of the best places for me to worship, believe it or not, is my bathroom. That's why when I, we fix our house at where we have it now, I put speaker in the bathroom. Yeah. And I was like, you know, because that's a place that nobody bothers you. And this morning I was like, you know, I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. And I was like, listen, and I was like, I, I was, you know, you can cry, nobody see you, you're in the shower, so just wipe it all down. Nobody had to tell me how much I needed. If I want my heart to be, so how, what did I need to do so that I put my heart where I need to be? And it's up to you. What is the God is asking you that you have allowed in your life? What does that mean? Well, whatever it is that Satan have tried to do against you, that is not, let, it's not letting you to be all for God. That, that you have become this restless person. That you have become this stressed person. That you have become this gossiper. That you have become this sinner. That you have become, a, what is that you know that it's time to come and say, God, I give it to you. Only you know. What is the thing that you need to change to make that happen? For some is just to forgive. For others, it's to us to be forgiven. For others, it's finances. Like it happened in the Bible to the rich men. 
They, it's so amazing because those are studied theology. I love it. Some believe it was Barnabé. The one that come and say, hey, what did I need to do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And he said, leave all your money, all your property and follow me. And he left kind of sad. The historian theology say that was Bernabé because later on, when you read about him and say that he left all the properties to come to the feet of Jesus. So sooner or later, he clicked and realized that the most important thing for him, for him, that doesn't mean that you need to do it too. Because if your heart is after God, God needs business people. You know, in order for us to go to the mission, we need your support. So God needs, you, you know, you don't need to give up what you are doing. What you need to do is what you're doing, make it after God's heart. And only you know who I am to judge you. I'm nobody. All I know is, that when I look at the mirror, all I can do is what God is asking me to change. So all I ask today is to close your eyes and think. If you're having conviction, to come to this altar right now and give it to God. If you have any kind of conviction, don't let Satan, don't do like Saul did. That he decided to stay with that issue that he was having, instead of saying, I'm sorry, Lord. And coming to the altar, that doesn't mean that you're less, actually. <laughs> it's the opposite. Because we all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Coming to the altar is a commitment to God saying, you know what, God? I'm, I don't want to stay what I am. I want to be in revival. I want to be like David. I want to be like David. That even when he sinned, and the prophet came and addressed it. He went on his knee and said, sorry, Lord. So help me, Lord, to don't be that person that I open my mouth and become like Absalom. Help me, Lord, that I won't be that person that talk bad about others. Help me that I won't be that person that live a life of excuses. Help me, Lord, that I will not be that person that live for myself because that's what Satan won. That was his sin. His sin was that he looked at himself more than you. So if you're here and say, I want to go back to just make God my priority. I encourage you to come and let it all down and give it all to Jesus one more time. Father, I pray right now that you will speak to everybody's heart. Because I know that there are people in this place that need to say, God, I forgive this person. I know that there are people in this place that say, God, I'm letting go of my mouth. It's yours now. I want to be like David. I want to be anointed. I want to be a revivalist. I want to be an influence. I refuse to be like Absalom. I refuse to be a person that bring division, that bring strives, that bring issues. I want to be a revivalist. I want to be a person that wherever I go, people see you, Lord. I want to let it all down. Everything that I have so more people know about you, Jesus. I want to believe my life so that people can see you, Lord. And in order for that to happen, I'm laying it all down today. Father, I pray for those that are walking to the platform because only you know. But I know that as they walk, they already have your answer. Because you saw, you saw David's heart before everything that happened to David. And he, you still say, even though that he was a sinner, you say, I have saw somebody after my heart. And I know that in this church, people, in this church, there are people that are after your heart, Lord. So I pray, I pray that you will keep using them the way that you have been, Lord. Father, I pray for you, fire, that only you can bring that fire in their life. Only you can restore but you say that you will. 
You will restore what the locusts have eaten. You will restore what Satan have taken away. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now. For more people full with your heart. cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours so I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Stand up. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. It was my cross. It was my cross for so I will live in the freedom you died for. And now my life Thank you, is yours. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for and the I will heart sing that David had. Of your goodness, God has you, no matter what he went through, no matter what happened to him, name. all he wanted it is to please you, Lord. So I pray for your fire, your presence, Lord, you that all you want is just to keep pleasing your heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus name. Christ, no matter what, that you will please you, Lord, about me. In the name of Jesus, in the name Jesus. of Jesus, Jesus. you deserve Amen. praise. Worthy is your name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now my shame is gone. Ooh. I stand amazed in your Amen. love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on. And I will sing. is going to be the best year yet for all of us hold on hold on hold on not only that but he has told me for those who frequent my throne are known in heaven by name and when you come before my throne I am the true and the only living king and when you visit my throne and I hold my scepter out to you, my beloved. I will not only grant you half the kingdom, I give you all the kingdom. Glory, glory to God. The main thing he has instilled in me is those who frequent the throne are known. And when I frequent his throne, he holds that scepter out. He knows you. He knows you. And he silences the entire universe to listen to this beloved child. Frequent the throne because you are known. Amen. Amen. 
And I know that sometimes we base it all on what we see. It even happened to the prophet Samuel when he had to go pick up David because God sent him. He looked at his brother because he was more tall and big. And, and God responded and said, I don't look like man looks. He was even the prophet and had to be directed and teach by God. I don't look like you look or like the man look. I look at their heart. So even though if you came or you didn't come to the platform, I know that there are more people here that God is speaking this because he's wanting for you to get out of that cave and don't stay in that cave. And the problem is that why forgiveness is such a powerful thing is because not only set us free, but by setting us free means that you become a powerful tool by God now and influence to set others free too. That's why it's disciple to make disciple. That's why it's revival will be contagious and it will transform people. That's why it doesn't just stay with you, but Satan want to use you and God want to use you. The choice is yours. And the amazing thing is I know that even if you come or you don't come, it's not up to me. Right now it's up to you right now and God. That whatever it is that God is asking you. Because the truth is, I can be missing it by looking at the upside just like Samuel. The most important thing is God looking at the inside. And, and right there where you are. Just make, make a covenant with God. So the Satan will hear too. That you forgive and that you let go. That you refuse to be that person that came to the cave angry on a stride. That you refuse to be an Absalom. Because sooner or later you might not feel like you are an Absalom. And maybe you're not. Because right now you are in the hurt stop, a stage of life. But somebody that is hurt that doesn't let go becomes somebody that hurts others. And if you today say no, I will not be that person. And become like David, a person after God's heart. Then the people that come around you will be the warriors, the mighty men and women of God. Do you want to see your kids transform and be a mighty man of God? Become a mighty woman, a man of God yourself. Do you want to see a revival in Benton, Kentucky? Make that revival be in your heart right now. Make that commitment right there where you are. You know what is going to transform our city, our school, and it's going to keep making this church one of the best church in town? It's you. If your heart is after him. In every revival that we know as a revival, there are people that are after God. For many different reasons. And because they are after God. This is what the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Once again, they realize that it's not about them. They realize that they're not the brownie or the cookie. If they humble themselves, then, then I will hear from heaven and I will touch them and heal their land. Restore their land, change their kids, change their cities. All we have to do is humble and let him be God. So, Father, I pray one more time for anybody in this place. I, I come in an agreement with them. We humble ourselves because we want you to be glorified in Christian fellowship. We want you to be glorified in Christian Fellowship School. We want for you to be glorified in Benton. And I'm starting here because I know that it's from here to the end of the world. But if we don't start humbling right here, how can you even touch the world? So thank you, Lord, for this amazing church that is not only touching Benton, but it's touching the nations I thank you for these men and women of God they are continuously 
deciding to be after your heart and not their self. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. For those coming at four, we'll see you at four. We encourage you to come on Wednesday. We're having amazing times too. God bless you.